Welcome back everybody, Todd here. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Today I wanted to do a follow-up video on this raised blind that you see in the background here. Uh, for those of you that have been around the channel for a while, you know last year we built this raised hunting blind. We began late summer and early fall. We finished it up and got it all closed in weather tight, but we didn't do anything to finish it off uh, for hunting season. We just kind of hunted it where it was. And so this year we've begun to uh, finish off the inside. So I wanted to kind of show you where we're at on that as a follow up. So come on with me and I'll show you the inside of this blind. Maybe before I take you inside, I'll just kind of give you a refresher. And for those of you that are new, get you caught up. This is a raised hunting blind that we built last year. The deck is seven feet, four inches, I think, off of the ground. And he went. No, I think it's seven six because he wanted to make sure he was higher than Ned's muddy tower blind. So uh, it is an eight foot side wall to the back. Of course, you've got 18 inches uh, of additional wall space in the front to give a good pitch on that shed roof. And it is the dimensions are 12 feet by eight feet outside. So that's the blind. It's set up to be a two-person hunting blind. That way we can introduce the, 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 the grandkids. As a matter of fact, my nine-year-old grandson uh, shot his first deer out of this blind a couple of weeks ago on the youth hunt. And so he was thrilled, and we're thrilled too, that the new generation and next generation is coming along. Uh, so hopefully we'll keep this uh, property and deer camp going perpetually but okay so that's kind of a catch you up to speed now the other thing is uh like that's repurposed uh metal siding and so we we were big into repurposing stuff around here and so it's not all about being the prettiest blind but um it's about making sure that they're built well and they'll hold up to the weather so this sits on the edge of a food plot let me show you the food plot Right down the middle here you got a patch of clover that's a perennial clover and this spring I planted clover into this kind of triangle here so there is quite a bit of clover in there but there's a bunch of weeds too that have to be killed off with herbicide uh, and we'll take care of that next spring because um, we want this whole clover portion here to look just like that a word on that clover that clover stands up good to the cold weather and that clover is going to be green darn near that green right into december and uh, frankly uh, it last year it was one of the draws that we had late season now all the way to the very back end there is new space that we claimed this year again it's back to keep increasing the footprint but that's looking really good and we took a lot of trees out and pushed that back and that's that's facing straight north so then coming around here towards the northwest coming around towards the west side there you go so that's the food plot out in front of this tower blind of course, we've got the blind brushed in, helps give us some screen to get into the back of the blind. Show you that here in a second. You can see my Jeep is sitting on the main trail. That's the trail that we use for road access with a tractor and Jeep and whatnot. But there's a walk trail here. And I know this is hard to, but there's a walk trail here. And let me get back there and I'll show you. See back that way is a walk trail that we've bushwhacked. And that loops way back around out there so that you can access the blind through this walk trail from behind. And that way, if there is something out there, you're not immediately spooking it. You've got the staircase going up. Of course, this is Mike's blind. He's a big um, University of Michigan fan, so we've kind of dubbed this that it's Mike's uh, tiny big house. 
and that's actually on a board that was taken from the back of his old blind and you can see that porcupine chew on it and uh, his little warning there warning all porkies will be shot on sight the porcupines do so much damage to uh, stuff up here they've chewed on our cabin chewed on all the deer blinds so you know they're varmint and they need to be extinguished just before i go up here's a bunch of rough sawn lumber and that's what we've used to uh, finish off the inside is a barn wood approach we get this from the amish it's rough sawn you can see i've got several boards stickered up here drying okay let me uh let me take you up and show you what we've been doing Okay, so we're inside, and you can see that we're using barn wood, like I said. These are one by eights. And I made the windows. Windows are made out of oak, oak rails, three quarter inch oak, plexiglass in between, sandwiched together and screwed. That way, if you ever had to take that out, you can unscrew them. They hinge up, and you can see there's a clasp there. I'll show you what they look like when you hinge them down. I'm having a hornet problem, so bear with me here. Okay, I'm back. You know, the sunny sunny day in October 1st, you got every freaking bee and hornet looking for a nice place to hang out. So these are the windows, like I said, clasp that holds them up. And I'll show you what they look like when you drop them. So we've got it set up for two hunters. We've got the field pods here. And there's a cup holder for each side. One little accessory. Once this is all dried down good, we're going to let it go a season. And then we're going to come in and hit it with an orbital sander. Knock all that stuff off of it and kind of give it a some. It'll still be rough, but... Then we're going to go ahead and put a, a weathered wood stain on it and call it a day. Looks cool. And then for the floor, right now we just have an old rug that I had up in my attic for a long time. And we'll just use that for this season. But next year, I'm going to get some of those commercial grade carpet squares, two by two. And we'll do the whole thing in carpet squares. Okay, let me put a window down and show you what we're talking about. Okay, so there's that window down. Obviously, you could see quite well out of the window. And I've just got a couple of hinges at the top. Two clasps at the bottom to hold it tight. There's weather stripping around it. I'll show you on the other one. But that seals that up nice and tight. So then you can see here, I'll come to the edge of this one. We've got a jam, three quarter inch, one by. And then that right there is a weather stripping. You can see kind of how it's foam. And then this is metal that we scabbed off of our scrap pile. And it's nice because when the water comes down, it's wrapped at the top. It's wrapped all the way around each side. So nothing's going to get in. It's got a nice ledge here for the water not to kind of come over and run down and get us. And then this will be nice and sealed tight when that oak swings against it. So, yeah, probably more hoopla than we really need, but better safe than sorry. You want to build something so it's going to last for the next generation. Then you can see to hold it up. You just got the hook and the loop. So once you pop the bottoms loose, swing it up, clasp it, and you're ready to hunt all day. So this way we could have one guy hunting and he can leave this closed and still see what's coming out the other side. I'll go ahead and shut this door to get these damn hornets out of here. All right, here's the view. 
so out of this side, you know, this hunter would be hunting all the way back to about, you know, the middle. The other guy would pick it up from there, hunt the other end of the plot if you were really doing it that way. Or it's probably going to be used more father-son scenario where it just allows you to both sit in and look out. If you spot something, then the adult can kind of help the kid. It's a lot of turf to hunt all by yourself, but you would hunt it from the chair that I'm in. We just have the push button uh, light there. Works great. I've got one of my blind. I've used it for years. Doesn't throw much light right now, but trust me, at 6.30 in the morning, it does. So, you know, that's what we're doing for the inside, keeping it rustic. It is a deer blind. Finishing it off. We'll seal up the wood once it's completely dried. Uh, it's pretty dry right now, but let's give it a full season. There's no rush on it. And like I said, we'll come through with an orbital sander, hit it, knock it down. Now, you got a lot of room up there. We're talking about building a loft in this other end and throw a bed up there. And the guy wants to take a nap and not come back to the cabin. You're all set to do that. We'll continue to build this out because that's kind of half the fun is setting this thing up and just building out your tiny little house. And, you know, you look at that whole tiny house movement. I mean, let's face it, this is 8 by 12 with an 8 foot side wall in the back and, you know, almost a 10 or 9 foot, more than 9.5 up, up top. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, just in case you're curious what's going on on the inside of this thing and how we're doing it, there you have it. Okay, so that's going to be a wrap for this video. I appreciate you hanging in there with me. I hope this gives you some ideas for your blind or your project that you might have coming up. Do yourself a favor and check out the Amish sawmill in your area if you have that option. When I priced it out, it was going to cost me more than $450 to do paneling on the inside of this building. And by the time I'm all in, I'll be less than $300 in all that barn wood. And I think it's a cool look. It's, it's definitely rustic and kind of like what we're looking for on this project. But hope it helps you out. Uh, do me a favor. Hit that like button. It helps me. And share this with your friends if you think that they would be interested. Check out some of my other videos in our playlist. Um, lots of different things to choose from. And hit that subscribe button if you like the kinds of things that I'm doing here. So we'll see you on the next one. Again, thanks for tagging along.